I am Dr. Lydia Sosenko, practitioner and educator of dental sleep medicine and oral appliance therapy for the treatment of snoring and apnea. Today, I'd like to answer what questions do I ask about my sleep test? So we've talked about previous videos, the importance of getting a sleep evaluation if you're chronically snoring and especially if you have the red flags of snoring and you've gotten as far as either having a home test, an HST, or a lab-based test, which is a PSG, short term for it, but you've gotten that far. So strongly, I recommend that you sit down with a medical professional, whether it be a sleep physician, nurse practitioner, physician's assistant, uh, general practitioner, somebody that can shed light on the specifics of your test. And the first thing I'd ask is, what is the overall diagnosis and what does that mean? Like what is actually happening during these events? And the reason I say that is because a lot of times I see patients for my initial consultation and I have a, a diagram that I kind of review with them and I see a light bulb goes off and a lot of people didn't really know what was happening during these apnea events and what happens to the oxygen and, and all the other triggers that's involved. So it's important to not only know your diagnosis, your overall diagnosis, but what is actually happening on, on a smaller level with oxygen. Second question is, was the average the same or were there periods of night that it got worse? And the reason I say that is because sometimes you can be overall mild uh, obstructive sleep apnea, but you might have severe episodes, severe number of episodes occurring, uh, say on your back, when you're sleeping on your back or during your deepest sleep, REM sleep. And um, that could definitely be affecting the overall diagnosis. For example, if the next day you would have slept more on your back, then you know your first diagnosis might be underestimated if you slept more on your back, if that number is typically more. So just kind of overall what's happening during those other pockets of, of, of during the night. Number three, what are all the treatment options and pluses and minuses? And with that, you have to be careful because I do believe a lot of physicians um, aren't aware of all the pluses and minuses of oral appliance therapy, which is one of the best treatment options, especially for mild to moderate apnea or for severe who can't tolerate CPAP. But um, just if you can you know, do your homework, uh, plus and minus of all therapies, also knowing you can always try one and if it doesn't work well, then you can try another option but there's multiple options for the mild, moderate, and severe categories and kind of you know get to know what they are. Um, and number four is what happens if I do not treat my apnea? And untreated apnea can lead to arrhythmias, high blood pressure, higher incidence of stroke, heart attack, uh, even automobile accidents. There's a lot that can happen with untreated apnea. It's important for you to ask specifically on your diagnosis what, what could happen if I don't treat it. And it's a very important question to ask. So those are the, the big kind of uh, takeaways of which questions to ask on your sleep test. Hope it was helpful. I hope you can share and like this video. It might help others understand their sleep test better. I will also have more videos on the specifics of the treatment options and actually what's happening during an apnea event. So if you have any other comments or questions, feel free to write them in the comments section. Thank you so much. Until next time.